Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Thanks too for all you do as County Farm Bureau leaders. Your involvement and effort make Farm Bureau even stronger. As you know, I'm an East Tennessee native uh, from Washington County and even though I spent a lot of time in Columbia and across the state, I farm and I vote in Washington County. We have an important upcoming election in our area and for most of us, this is only the fourth time in our life that there has been an open seat in the first congressional district. Congressman Phil Rowe has been a true friend of Farm Bureau and our hope is that one of these candidates will take his lead and continue representing our East Tennessee values in our nation's capital. The purpose of this video is to give you an introduction to all the candidates and our hope is that you'll listen, take notes, maybe study their positions and ask questions to find out more about each person before making your decision. I encourage you to please let the candidates know that you watched the video and express your appreciation to them for participating and for recognizing that farm issues are extremely important in this election. All the candidates are listed on the handout that you've been provided along with contact information. We invited the 11 candidates who are registered with both the Secretary of State and the Federal Election Commission to submit a video. Nine out of the 11 responded. As always, uh, please feel free to reach out to us with your thoughts and questions. And again, we look forward to seeing you in person as soon as possible. Thank you. Hey y'all, I'm Phil Arlinghouse. Uh, the conservative candidate for U.S. House Tennessee District 1. Uh, I'm married to Hannah, uh, father to Lorelei, graduate of Seymour High School, graduate of Johnson University, formerly Johnson Bible College. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a minister pastor by trade, by, by training. Uh, work for a nonprofit now. Felt called to this race by God. Uh, whatever the outcome is, I felt I, I do feel strongly that I was called to this race by God. Uh, also, I, I want my daughter to grow up in America with at least the same amount of freedoms I, I had growing up. Thanks for inviting me to participate in this video. You know, when I was two years old, my young parents fled communist Cuba to legally immigrate here in the United States. And like so many others, including farmers, Everything they had was taken by the communist regime. That's why I'm so passionate about defending our freedoms and making sure the American dream lives on for every generation to come. I know many of you feel the same way. You want to keep your farms thriving for the next generation. I'm committed to working with you as your congressman to keep that dream alive, and I would be honored to have your vote. Thank you. Hi, folks. I'm Rusty Crow. I'm an Army veteran, a husband, a father, and a state senator. I'm running for Congress because Tennessee is on the right track and because D.C. needs a darn good dose of Tennessee. I was elected on the slogan, It Matters Who Governs, and I've kept my promises to govern by common sense conservative principles. As we begin rebuilding after the coronavirus, America needs more of what has worked so well for our great state. I'm Steve Darden. I worked in my dad's restaurant from a young age and we depended on local farmers and vendors. I care about our food supply and where it comes from and I think we should eat food grown and produced locally. The flavor and quality of the food we eat is important for all of us and as congressman, I will work so that our policies allow farmers to thrive. I pledge to work to preserve our farm culture and to strengthen our rural communities. Thank you, Tennessee Farm Bureau, for having me here today, and thank you for all that you do for our farmers. You know, here in the office, they call me Dr. Gap, but I'm not just a doctor. I'm Josh. I'm a Christian, a husband, a busy father of four, and a lifelong entrepreneur. Look, I may not be a farmer, but we have a lot in common. Just like in my industry of healthcare, farmers face burdensome regulations that as your next congressman, I look forward to working with you to eliminate. Hey everybody, my name's Diana Harshberg and I'm running for U.S. Congress in Tennessee's first district. I'm a pharmacist and like you, I'm a farm owner. And I've been a small business owner for over 30 years. 
Our nation's at a tipping point, and just like you, I'm concerned about my family's future. I have a son and two grandsons, and that's why I'm going to push the America First agenda in Washington to ensure that our East Tennessee values and our work ethic can be passed down to future generations. Hello, Farm Bureau friends. This is David Hawk. When I ran for the Tennessee legislature 20 years ago, I was frustrated. Frustrated because Nashville wasn't listening to me and certainly wasn't listening to you. After 18 years of good work in our Tennessee legislature, Farm Bureau and myself have done some really good work together. We've improved your property rights. We've improved your water rights. Fast forward now, 20 years later, I'm just as frustrated with Washington and what they've become. I want to go to Washington on behalf of Farm Bureau and be your eyes, ears, and voice so they hear us loudly and clearly in Northeast Tennessee. Hi, I'm Timothy Hill. I currently live in uh, Sullivan County and serve the third house district in the, in the state house right here in the Capitol right behind me. Uh, I've served here for eight years and finishing out uh, my time here at the state house. And of course I'm running for Congress. The third house district is comprised of Sullivan, Johnson and Carter counties. And it's been a true honor and pleasure to serve there. Uh, my family, I have two sons. Uh, uh, Gavin, who's 18, and Hudson, who is four. That's right, let that sink in for a second. And then uh, my wife, Charity, and I, uh, we have a, a wonderful home together, a wonderful family. I want to just say thank you for the opportunity to come before you and come before the Farm Bureau because there are very few organizations that have been uh, such a backbone of Tennessee and really backbone of our country. And so I'm ready to discuss a couple of your issues as we are uh, talking about running for Congress and what I'll be doing at the federal level when it comes to farmers. Hi, I'm Blair Walsingham. I'm running for Congress in Tennessee's first district. As an Air Force veteran, homesteader, and small business owner, I've realized the problems in Tennessee have become too big to ignore. I stepped up before to serve my country at the age of 17 enlisting in the United States Air Force, and today I'm stepping up to serve my country again. Politics should be about people, not the other way around. I'm running to help District 1 and all of Tennessee with policies based on compassion, personal freedom, and data. My top priority as your next member of Congress is to help President Trump get our economy going again. Our farmers are small business owners and they're going to feel the brunt of this economy downturn just as much as shop owners on Main Street. I have experience helping create jobs in the private sector and leading key economic development efforts in the public sector. And I'm the only candidate who has released a detailed jobs plan to help bring back jobs, good paying jobs to our region. I'm committed to helping solve the crisis of falling farm incomes too. At the federal level, the most important thing we can do is help our farmers find new markets for their products and ensuring a fair playing field when it comes to trade. That includes holding China accountable for their bad behavior on the international stage. Now that won't solve everything, but innovation and new ideas also have a role to play. Here in East Tennessee, we are uniquely positioned to develop greater agritourism opportunities where farmers can earn income. Attractions like Pigeon Forge, the Smoky Mountains, and Bristol draw millions of tourists to our area, and they're all potential consumers for new agritourism business. I support reducing regulations on all of our business owners, including our farmers. While I support the Farm Bill, I would work to include as much regulatory reduction as possible as part of its next passage. You know, I'm especially worried, I'm really worried about the future of our farms. The average age of our farmers is nearly 60. And the younger Tennesseans, they just aren't staying on the farm anymore. I know in 1964, we had over a thousand dairy farms in Washington County alone. And in 2017, there were just 19 left. My years in the Tennessee Senate have taught me just how important the Farm Bureau Federation is, not just to Tennessee, but to the future of our entire nation. So one of my top priorities as your congressman is going to be to keep our Farm Bureau strong. On federal policy H-2A, guest workers are now so overregulated they're virtually unaffordable. And the system hasn't been updated in 25 years. I'll partner with the Farm Bureau to pass a Farm Workforce Modernization Act, support the Farm Bill to help our farmers manage risk in bad economic times and severe weather. 
provide help for our beginning farmers as well as funding, funding for trade development and agricultural research. And out-of-control bureaucrats have been killing our small farms through thousands of pages of regulations. The EPA takes 17 pages now, over 10,000 words, just to explain how to use pesticides. Fortunately, President Trump, he's been eliminating 22 regulations in Washington for every new one, and we need to continue that trend. To me, that means we've got out-of-control spending, pay down the debt, balance the budget, fix our broken immigration system, and in other words, we need less government and more agricultural values that made America great, like personal responsibility, faith, and family. You know, our Farm Bureau president, my friend, Jeff Aiken, he said at our state convention, we can't let obstacles keep us from running our race. Do what's right, have faith, and it will work. The top congressional priority in District 1 is across the board economic recovery. The Farm Bureau's questions and conversations I've had with meat producers, dairy farmers, and fruit and vegetable growers reveal a fundamental truth. Farmers want to be treated fairly. Everything else elaborates on that theme. We must insist on a level playing field. Trade deals must open markets and not put our farmers at a disadvantage. The COVID-19 crisis revealed that our food supply can be vulnerable, and so we should enact policies that show a strong preference for locally produced food. It's stunning how many federal agencies are involved in farm operations. I will fight to avoid regulations that might sound good, but whose impact is mainly felt by the farmer. We can't make it so difficult to maintain farming operations that family farms continue to disappear from the landscape. The H2A program needs to be affordable and needs to be simplified. Let's presume that local domestic workers simply aren't available like we do for nurses. I would propose shifting oversight of the program from the Department of Labor to the USDA. The program needs to be administered by agents who understand farmers' needs. Farmers expect to work hard, and those of us who not only like to eat, but understand economics and nutrition, need to create an environment where farmers in our district not only get by, but do well. It's in all of our best interests. Everything has changed with coronavirus. And the number one issue that I see is how vulnerable we've become as a nation due to globalization. My top priority is to work with all levels of government and the private sector to respond with localization, to create more robust local economies. And we can't do that without a strong farming industry, which will be critical to strengthening the economy here in East Tennessee. How is it that during the lockdown, I can't find beef on my grocery store shelves, yet farmers are telling me that they're not even being paid break-even prices. That's not economically sustainable for farmers or the nation. In Congress, I will work with you to find a solution. When burdensome regulations hurt farms, they hurt America, period. In addition to cutting regulations, as a dad, I care about the next generation of the family farm. I want to eliminate the inheritance tax, but at the same time, I also want to strip that farmland value from being taxed when you transfer that property to the next generation. I would like Americans to begin taking farm jobs again, but ensuring our farmers have access to a reliable supply of legal labor is critical to our national interest. We can create a more reliable farm labor supply by replacing the 10-month visa with a longer-term three-year visa. This cures the headache of applying for a new visa every year, and it fills the two-month gap in labor shortage for livestock operations. Increasing U.S. agricultural exports is a key component to GDP growth and strengthening our farm industry. I will actively support and encourage any and all policies that strengthen international markets to our farmers. The best farm bill is the one that puts farmers first. We need to stop holding farming interests hostage to unrelated issues like food stamp work requirements and low income housing policies. We need a clean farm bill, period. The farm bill needs to be about farmers. Everything else can go into a separate bill. In our district, constituents are concerned about jobs. East Tennessee is long overdue for a revitalization. Economic development shouldn't stop at Knoxville. 
Along with job creation comes education and workforce training. They go hand in hand because without that training, we won't be able to attract employers who offer good paying jobs to the region. I'm gonna work with other members to come up with solutions to lagging farm income. I will support Chuck Grassley's bill, which was introduced in May to require meat processors to purchase a minimum of 50% of their weekly meat volume from the open market. I know that's important to you guys. I'm going to work to make sure the government gets out of the way and work to help family farms find new markets and ways to deliver directly to consumers and expand new technologies and farming methods. I plan on listening to farmers. I would love to have monthly conversations with farming constituents to keep up on the data on the issues these families face. Why in the world should a dairy farmer in Wisconsin be able to step into the milk market in Tennessee and make more money for their pound of milk? Why would a local dairy farmer need to pay the freight cost to ship milk in and then pay the freight cost to ship the milk back out? It's crazy. I think the government does best when it does little. That's the approach I'll take to any regulation that could potentially impact our farmers. Look, farmers need trade, not aid. I believe President Trump has done a fantastic job reworking our trade agreements to make sure Americans finally get a fair deal, but these trade agreements need to be enacted. I know Sonny Purdue's doing his best to get things started, and when I'm in Washington, I'll work to help get these trade agreements moving forward. Hello again, Farm Bureau friends. It's David Hawk. The biggest issue facing the 1st Congressional District of Tennessee is jobs and the economy, but it's much deeper than that. It's not just those few words. Our federal budget and our deficit spending has gotten us underwater. I cannot in good conscience allow my daughters and your family be living with $25 trillion in debt. I want to be part of balancing the federal budget because financial security is a national security issue. Secondly, mental health and substance abuse issues are so negative to so many of our families in Northeast Tennessee. One out of every four families in East Tennessee is dealing with some type of mental health or substance abuse issues. I want to get our families the help that they need. Again, it's a workforce development issue. Number three, the H-2A immigrant work program that you all deal with every day needs to be clarified. We need to have a clear path for your employees to get into the country, do the work that needs to be done, and get back home. I want to be part of clarifying that for you so we all have a wage to pay that is fair and honest and we're all on an even playing field. Folks, overregulation has been coming down from DC for generations now. I want to be part of fixing that just like we fixed our property rights issues in Tennessee. You need to be able to make a living off the land just like you and your families have for the last hundred years or so. Lastly, the Farm Bill. I will 100% vote in favor of the Farm Bill every time it comes before me, but I do see some problems. Some other well-meaning legislators across the country like to tag amendments on the Farm Bill like they're ornaments on a Christmas tree. Washington has to get away from tagging amendments on the Farm Bill, and I hope to be able to do that as I support it going forward. Thank you. So what's the biggest issue facing the 1st Congressional District? I believe the, the most important issue facing where we live is jobs and the economy. How do we restart and recover from all of the virus um, and everything that's happened over just the last few months? Uh, we've got to figure out a way to open up the market, not increase red tape, not increase regulation, uh, but be there for folks uh, as we recover and start to grow again. What we need to do is unshackle our farmers from government overreach and unneeded rules. We need to work with the president to find new customers for each and every one of our farmers. I operate from the perspective that we are overregulated in general. Farmers are especially burdened at the federal level and overregulated. Let's allow farmers to do what they do best 
really what we need them to do and farm. And let's get government out of the way. Support President Trump and his pro-growth policies. I supported the USMCA. That's why I was invited to the White House for the USMCA bill signing. I will continue to support President Trump's efforts to find new markets for American ag products worldwide. I appreciate you and I appreciate the opportunity to come before this wonderful organization and seek your vote for Congress for the 1st Congressional District. Times are perilous, times are hard. You need to know that you can reach out to me directly. My cell phone number is 423-646-1589 because I'm a firm believer you can't represent what you don't know. I look forward to your support. I covet and seek your support and your prayers and we look forward to serving you in Washington, D.C. A top priority here in District 1 is addressing poverty in rural areas and the issues stemming from that that affect our local communities and farms. We must protect our food supply and quality by investing in local infrastructure and increasing incentives for our local farmers here in Tennessee. Farm income has been in a slump for years. Taking care of our farmers is not just about economics and a food supply, it's about humanity. It's about supporting jobs and families of the 2 million farmers and the 22 million Americans employed as such. This is about improving the industry so our farmers don't face a five times higher suicide rate than the average American. In this difficult point in history, our legislators are scrambling to find money to provide for everyone in need. Now is the time to invest so that we can emerge stronger. We can achieve this by investing in not only hard, but also soft infrastructure for our farmers. Whether they need paved roads or broadband internet, it will be vital to our farmers' survival. Not to mention, these investments are a win-win scenario for our farmers and for our local communities who need employment. We have to take care of our farmers, making sure that they have adequate storage for the fruits of their labor. Recently, we've seen lengthy train deals, which resulted in farmers having to dump their produce and milk. This cannot go on. Farmers are becoming increasingly vulnerable to outside sources. We need to not only explore new initiatives and in agricultural technologies, but embrace them. I'm gonna put it out there. To be honest, I don't know much about, about farming. Uh, I don't know too much about the H2A program. Uh, even the farm bill, uh, some of the trade agreements. I don't understand a lot of it and how it specifically affects farmers. Uh, but one of my priorities for this district uh, is to be truly a representative of this district and to understand the issues that make up this district. So, uh, you know, like with the farm bill, uh, one of your questions here is, what is your vision on a strong and effective farm bill? Okay, working with you all, understanding your needs, understanding what works, understanding what doesn't work. Now, I can talk about my other things that I, I believe will help you all, like we passed the fair tax and repealed the 16th Amendment and getting rid of the income tax and getting an alternative minimum tax and getting rid of every other tax and just having a nationwide sales tax, I believe that will help farmers. I believe that will help every level of and every industry of, of, of America and the economy. But, you know, but when you, you, you want to ask about specific things, I'm going to have to come to you all. You all are the experts uh, in this field, in this industry. I am not. So I really want to represent you all. And when I have questions, come to you all. You know, most people who try to go to Washington, they talk about what they'd like to do. But in Tennessee, I've done it. I've worked with four Farm Bureau presidents, Joe Hawkins, Flavius Barker, Lacey Upchurch, Jeff Aiken, to keep Tennessee on top. And now we're the envy of the nation. Our great state is strong because we've continued to invest in agriculture, and my heart is with our farmers. That's what Washington needs to hear. D.C. needs a darn good dose of Tennessee.
My skills have been developed in the boardrooms and courtrooms of East Tennessee, and I'm also a listed mediator. These will come in handy in Congress. I've been a difference maker in everything I've ever done, and I'll develop relationships there to benefit us here. I'm not a career politician. Instead, I'm a business owner with local government experience working as mayor alongside our current Congressman Phil Rowe. As Congressman, you can count on me to be a friend of the farmer. I'm the only candidate in this race with experience both as a physician and as an entrepreneur. As a doctor, I am trained to diagnose problems and prescribe treatments. As an entrepreneur, I have to find innovative ways to solve problems and add return on investment. I believe an innovative private sector mindset ensures your next congressman supports local farmers and strengthens local economies. Thank you again, and I humbly ask for your vote in the August 6th election, and I look forward to working with you as your next congressman in the 1st District. Why am I the best candidate to represent you? I'm just like you. I own a farm in Irwin. I've been a local small business owner for over 30 years, and I believe the people of this district need to be represented by someone just like them. I'm as East Tennessee as it gets. From the pharmacy to the farm, I'll represent you. God bless you and God bless America. Hello again, Farm Bureau friends. I'm David Hawk, a card-carrying Farm Bureau member from way back. We've been working on issues together for the last 18 years. The Buy Tennessee Milk Program, that's something you and I worked on to try to incentivize folks to buy Tennessee milk and help our dairy industry. The Tennessee Ag Enhancement Program came about because of a vote with my support several years ago. Folks, you can go visit my website at www.davidhawk4tennessee.com to learn more. But I ask for your vote and support. Once again, I'm David Hawk. What are you doing? I'm doing how you put this down, I guess. Yeah. Not like that. And you put them like this. And that. That's pretty good. You did a good job. <laughs> so why me? I'm a candidate of the people. I've spent way too many years watching career politicians toe a line based on what letter follows their name. No issue should be governed by a defined point of view. Least of all, the most essential industry for all of humanity. I will represent your best interest because your best interest represents all of America. By listening and supporting our industry needs, our producers can find even more reasons to continue being farmers. I will support you. I truly want to represent the people. I truly want to be that voice of this people and be in that place of, okay, here we are. What are we doing? Why, why are we doing that? Would this hurt you? Will this help you? Will this, you, you know, what is that? You know, I don't want to be a representative uh, that turns this into my career. I don't want to be that. I, I signed the term limits pledge before anyone else did because I believe in it. I'm not turning my back on it. I'm not being that way. I'm doing it because I believe in it and I want to represent you all and not my interests. I, could, I, I don't care about my interest because that's not what a representative does. A representative believes in what they're representing, and that's District 1 of Tennessee. Thank you all, and God bless you. Thanks to the Tennessee Farm Bureau for the opportunity to share a little bit about myself and my views on the issues that are important to our farm families. I'm John Clark, and after a 36-year career in the private sector, I spent seven years in public service here in Kingsport. I served as a me member of the Board of Mayor and Alderman, and then two terms as mayor, stepping down after finishing my second term last summer. My wife, Etta, is the eighth generation of her family on the family farm in Hawkins County. The Farm Bureau has been an important part of her family's farming history, as they have been loyal members of the Farm Bureau since early 1950s. Farming is an important part of our lives and that of our extended family. I'm running for Congress because I want to bring my experience to Washington to help President Trump protect our freedom, bring back jobs, and save the American dream.